Finally, after more than a decade of on-off negotiations, agreement has now been reached between the major world powers and Iran on curbing its nuclear program. Well, the big news of the day, the UN Security Council has now approved a resolution on implementing last week's nuclear deal with Iran. We have stopped the spread of nuclear weapons in this region. Because of this deal, the international community will be able to verify that the Islamic Republic of Iran will not develop a nuclear weapon. The world is a much more dangerous place today than it was yesterday. Imagine how dangerous Islamic State would be if it had armored divisions, fighter jets, and ballistic missiles. Imagine Islamic State building atomic bombs. Well, maybe it's not that hard to imagine. The Islamic State of Iran, like ISIS, just much bigger. آمریکا در مورد مسائل گوناگون جهانی و منطقه ای مذاکره ای نداریم. Iranians chanted death to America and death to Israel while burning the U.S. and Israeli flags after weekly prayers in Tehran, in sharp contrast to new Iranian President Hassan Rouhani's outreach to the West and promises of moderation and easing of tensions with the outside world. During the prayers, the master of ceremonies also led the congregation in hateful chants. President Rouhani has been trying to convince the world that he is a diplomatic, moderate leader, looking for a quick way to end sanctions on Iran over its controversial nuclear program. Israel remains unconvinced by Rouhani's charm offensive, and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Israel would unilaterally strike Iran to prevent the Islamic Republic from developing a nuclear weapon. Reacting to today's Iran nuclear deal, most of the GOP came out to denounce the agreement with Tehran. Senator Lindsey Graham says this deal is, quote, far worse than I ever dreamed it could be. And former Governor Mike Huckabee saying shame on the Obama administration. Donald Trump trashed President Obama's nuclear deal with Iran. Let's talk about, about the issue of Iran, another big story that's raised. How would you deal with Iran? How well, would I President the, Trump do that? I think the deal is horrible. I think the deal is absolutely horrible for us, but it's really, really bad for Israel. And most importantly, we don't have the right to unfettered go in there and check whenever we want to, anytime, anywhere. We don't have the right to do that. So what kind of a deal is it? We know they're going to cheat. We know that. We also know the Persians are great negotiators. And frankly, I think the deal is terrible, and it's certainly bad for Israel. We think this is a historic mistake. And as your reporter uh, before me said, uh, this is something that Israel isn't alone. Uh, a lot of important Arab countries in the region are speaking out against this deal too. And I would remind you, Wolf, when Arab leaders and Israeli leaders agree, it doesn't happen every day of the week. And I think people should pay attention. It means something. The Prime Minister also said Israel reserves the right to defend itself. Does that mean that you consider the military option a strike against Iran's nuclear program still very much alive? Iran's hostility towards Israel is documented. Um, I mean, they just say Israel is a cancer that must be removed or that Israel uh, uh, must be obliterated or Israel must be destroyed. Uh, this is par for the course in the way the Iranian regime expresses itself and of course they're a threat to us but it's also a threat to your country wolf but first let's go to ambassador bolden ambassador uh, will iran keep its word yeah, absolutely not i'd tweet twice on that look iran has been violating its commitment under the nuclear non-proliferation treaty not to seek nuclear weapons for almost 35 years so today it's agreed to commit not to seek nuclear weapons under this agreement there's no evidence whatever that Iran has made a strategic decision to give up that long quest for deliverable nuclear weapons. That's a critical fallacy underlying the entire Obama administration position. What's our, what was our alternative to have no deal at all and have the sanctions continue to cripple them? Is that what the... The sanctions were not crippling them. I mean, so you, what would you have done? Well, I think the course we've been on really for 20 years now has led to the point where the most likely outcome, deal or no deal, is Iran gets nuclear weapons. The unpleasant reality is the only way to stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons is if somebody's prepared to use military force. It, do, would, you be, would you expect that Israel would take some military action or is Israel going to just sit back and, and be unhappy with this and watch it unfold whichever way it unfolds? Uh, I think they should have taken action five years but ago. But what do they do now? Well, they should act today before it gets worse. By not dismantling Iran's nuclear program, in a decade this deal will give an unreformed, unrepentant, and far richer terrorist regime 
the capacity to produce many nuclear bombs. What a stunning, historic mistake. And Israel is not bound by this deal with Iran because Iran continues to seek our destruction. We will always defend ourselves. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So if these are the facts, if these are the facts, and they are, where should a red line be drawn? A red line should be drawn right here. What a stunning historic mistake. And Israel is not bound by this. Everybody seems to have very strong opinions about the Iran nuclear deal and former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman is among them. And she seems a little conflicted though because she says the Iran nuclear deal that Obama is working on will lead to the second coming of Christ. We need to realize how close this clock is to getting toward the midnight hour. And I think that's why for our sake, for the sake of our family, for our nation, for the next generations, we need to cry out to a holy God. Mm -hmm. um, this is coming faster than anyone can see. I know I, I worked very hard on the Intelligence Committee to try and keep up with what was happening in the world. It got to such a crescendo, I could hardly keep up with it anymore. Mm -hmm. The events have mm -hmm. picked up such a pace and are going to continue. It's just like the Bible forewarned that at the, in the last days it will be like the beginning of birth pangs. In my opinion, we are far beyond the beginning of birth pangs. We're moving far down into the process. For women who are listening to this show mm -hmm. today, you know what I'm talking about, what it's like to deliver a baby at the very beginning stage and then at the very end before the baby is born. All I can tell you as a mom who has given birth to five babies, the birth pangs are very close together. They're very intense now, and we are literally watching month by month the speed move up to a level we've never seen before with these events. Barack Obama is intent. It is his number one goal to ensure that Iran has a nuclear weapon. Why? Why would you put the nuclear weapon in the hands of madmen who are Islamic radicals who believe it's their religious duty to bomb Israel and to bomb the United States? That is where we're headed right now. And that's why the best thing that we can do is have churches and pastors explain our times. Believers need to get our lives right with God. And then we intercede. We intercede and intercede. And then not despair, but rejoice that we get to be living in the most exciting time Absolutely. in history. Prophets said we look to the future. We long to see those days and live in those days. Why? Because it's the return of a soon and coming king. Jesus Christ is coming back. We, in our lifetimes, potentially could see Jesus Christ returning to earth, the rapture of the church. This is one of the most exciting times in history, we need to be exactly watching the tenor of the times, be observing, and look up our redemption draweth nigh. These are wonderful times, but we see the destruction, but this is a destruction that was foretold.